and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And today's baking video is a super exciting and actually really easy considering there is no baking going on. But I feel like in many ways, this is one of my best recipes and it is long overdue because today I'm going to be teaching you how I make my delicious tiramisu. Now, of course, if you're not familiar, tiramisu is a classic no-bake Italian dessert. The name tiramisu literally means pick me up, probably because of all the strong coffee that goes into this dessert, but it is absolutely delicious, guys. And I honestly just have been making it so much over the years and have been tweaking and playing around with my recipe to the point where I finally have it right and actually have a recipe down for you guys. The last time I made it, I was sure to measure everything. That way I can give you guys exact measurements because I usually just do it by eye. But now I have a perfect recipe for you all so you can finally make my delicious tiramisu. It honestly rivals the tiramisus of those that you will find in Italy. It is so good. So without further ado, let's get started and let's make this delicious classic Italian dessert, tiramisu. what this dessert consists of is sort of cookies layered with cream and of course the cookies are dipped in a really strong coffee also known as espresso so there are a couple stages in making this dessert the first thing that I usually love to do is to make my espresso in this classic macchinetta because I need a lot of coffee and this one is quite large when you use a macchinetta like this the really old-school Italian machines there are some steps involved first of all you need to fill it up with water so fill this base up with water Water. There's like a little screw here and you usually want to fill up water until it meets the halfway mark of the screw That is how you know that you have enough water and not too much Another trick is is to just pop this inside if water comes seeping through the holes You probably have too much water and should empty some out, but if not perfect now We have our espresso and we are going to put enough espresso inside to fill this little area here so as you can see, the espresso is piled high here, but I did not pat it down. You need to still create enough room for the water to actually be able to bubble through and create this coffee here. So we are going to pop this lid right on here, seal it up, and close it really tightly because this is sort of famous for having the coffee seep through if it's not closed tight enough. So close that really tightly. The water will eventually boil and it will combine with that espresso and your coffee will end up in here for us to pour out and it will be ready for us to use. So I'm going to pop this on the stove while we continue with the rest of the steps for this tiramisu. So as the coffee is going, I like to be productive and continue making the tiramisu. So the next part is to start working on the cream. Now I like to make basically a zabaione for the cream. I don't like to use raw eggs, so I essentially cook the egg yolks before I add them to the recipe. And how I do that is really truly just making a zabaione, which I do have the recipe for on my site. So if you'd like a really detailed instructions on how I make that, I will link the video down below. I'm just going to quickly make one up for you guys. And essentially I will be needing three egg yolks, three tablespoons of sugar, and three tablespoons of this Marsala wine. I absolutely love this. And you're essentially making a zabaione, which is the egg portion of the cream for the tiramisu. So everything is nicely cooked and you don't have to be afraid to be eating raw eggs in this recipe. Now I filled a pot about a third to a quarter of the way up of just water. We are going to be placing this on top, putting this on a medium to low heat on our stove top and whisking this until it froths and comes together to create essentially a thickened, creamy egg mixture. It's going to be so delicious. You can literally eat it like this with a spoon, but it will be perfect in our tiramisu cream. The zabayone is ready, so I'm setting that aside for now until I need it. You can see that it more than doubled in size and it is now a pale yellow color. Now the espresso is done. I have two cups here, so I'm adding this to a bowl. And to the espresso, this is optional, but I always like to add just a touch of sugar, so two tablespoons of sugar. And as well, you can flavor your coffee with an extract or your favorite liqueur. I'm just going to be adding another two tablespoons of this Marsala wine and giving that a mix while the coffee is still hot. If you don't make the coffee ahead of time, I don't like to use it when it's too hot, so I'll just be adding a couple ice cubes right into the coffee just to cool it down. Now we will set the coffee aside for when we need it, and we are going to be getting ready to making the best part of the tiramisu, the cream. First things 
things first is the mascarpone. Use your favorite brand of mascarpone because sometimes they're not as good as other times, so just be familiar with it. It is essentially a soft Italian cheese. I'm going to be adding the entire tub in here, which is close to 500 grams. It is 475 grams, but a little bit more wouldn't hurt either. Add that tub right into your stand mixer. And now with the paddle attachment on, we are going to be whipping the mascarpone to get it nice and soft. So now that the mascarpone is nice and whipped and creamy, we can add the zabaione, which is basically our cooked egg yolks, right into the mixture with the mascarpone. And now let's give that a whip to incorporate. Next, the sugar and the whipping cream. So I like to add a cup and a half of icing sugar. And then about 475 milliliters or essentially two cups of whipping cream. This is heavy 35% whipping cream right into the mix. And now let's give that a whip to incorporate. So now all of my elements are here and this tiramisu is ready for me to assemble. I have the mascarpone cream. I have my cold or room temperature coffee and I have the Savoyardi cookies or lady fingers. Now what we are going to do is dip them in this espresso and place them in this baking tray. This is approximately like a 14 by 10 inch baking dish so if you guys want you can sort of try to find something that is similar in size to this. Now what I like to do first is dip the cookies in coffee. This coffee is nicely cooled down to room temperature. Usually a two second dip drain a little bit off and then I bite one to see. So you can see how much coffee approximately went into the cookie because some cookies are different. Some cookies need a little bit more coffee to get nicely soaked and some need so much less. And I don't know what's worse, a dry tiramisu or one that is way too soaked in coffee. I really couldn't tell you so we try to get the perfect amount. So what I find is one, two dips, lightly draining that off and placing that in your baking dish and you're good to go. Growing up in an Italian household, tiramisu was one of the first desserts that I ever learned to make. And I kept making them for my family and having them test them out and seeing what they liked more. And I remember my mom was always very squeamish about using raw eggs or anything in her recipe. So I sort of had to develop that zabayone technique and basically cooking the egg yolks before I added it to the tiramisu or I don't think she would have wanted to eat it. And I honestly feel like this cream alone is so delicious, guys. So, I mean, you really just can't go wrong, guys. Coffee and cream and a nice cool dessert, it is... Heavenly. I love tiramisu and it is a great recipe to have in your repertoire. So now with these espresso soaked cookies, we are ready for our first layer of the cream. So basically use about half of this cream. You kind of just want to eyeball it, but it looks so delicious guys. So let's literally just pour this cream right on top of these coffee soaked cookies. So as you can see, I smoothed over the first layer of this tiramisu and it looks absolutely delicious. I left a little bit of space in between the cookies. That way some of this delicious mascarpone cream can fall on the inside. So we have lots of cream to cookie ratio it will be really good and lastly pretty much the rest of this cream is going right on top of these final layer of cookies so we are basically just filling in every crevice with this delicious tiramisu cream we just want to make sure that the cookies are nicely tucked in to this little bed with this delicious cream so making sure that we smooth out the layer on top and finally, before this goes into the fridge for at least eight hours or preferably overnight, the longer the better usually, we are going to give this a nice dusting of cocoa powder on top. And guys, we have tiramisu. It looks so delicious. You can see through this glass baking dish. It looks heavenly. I have to make some room in the fridge for this because like I said, it needs to go into the fridge and be refrigerated. That way the cookies get soft and all the flavors mingle. The cream will set up a little bit and it will just be so good. But I will be testing this for you guys because that is the best part and I know you'll really want to see the finished product. So basically, I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to keep this into the refrigerator until you are of course ready to serve because this is a dish best served cold. So I have my delicious tiramisu here. This is actually the next day and I'm so excited to cut into this and eat it. So let's cut a nice delicious piece here. So now the moment we've been waiting literally one day for, let's try this tiramisu and I'll let you guys know how it is. Honestly guys, 
the best tiramisu that there is. I've been making this recipe for years and I finally perfected it and measured it out for you guys so that you can replicate it down to the tea. That cream is perfectly sweetened. The cocoa powder has nicely set so that when you bite into it, you're not gonna be coughing from cocoa powder just sitting on top of there. And of course, I should also mention, keep this in the fridge until you're ready to serve. And please, guys, don't forget when you put it in the fridge, you don't want to cover it with tin foil or anything like that because you will ruin the top, just the cocoa powder on top, and you're fine. I feel like it could keep in the fridge for up to four or five days, but trust me, it will not last that long. Heavenly, guys. This is perfect for the upcoming holidays, and of course, all year round. Tiramisu is a recipe that you need to make and you need to add to your repertoire. I swear, once you make it at home and you realize how good it is, you won't even want to get it at a restaurant anymore because restaurant tiramisu, usually not that good. <laughs> I'm gonna have another bite now because my mouth is watering. Mmm. Mmm. Please don't forget to check my website, ladolcelisa.com, for the written recipe and instructions and more pictures and things like that. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me if you're enjoying these videos to give it a thumbs up. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way I can keep making more videos for you guys. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I really do hope you give this recipe a try. Please let me know in the comments down below. Bye for now. I'm gonna keep story about hitting me to your childhood. <laughs> My childhood. I feel like I never did Okay. <laughs> oh, Joel, can you film me cutting this piece? Thanks. Mm. Oh, she just dropped that. Mmm. This is freaking amazing. So good.